The wizard will tell you, don't look for answers here. Look here for the right questions. Part the first, architecture of the mind, in which the wizard examines the question, what makes people think the way they do? Chapter 1. Speaking Worlds into Existence. In the Book of Beginnings, an entire universe is spoken into existence with the words, Let there be light. Bada bing, bada boom, the big bang. As soon as the lights are on, the Creator continues by saying, Let there be this and let there be that, until everything has been spoken into existence except you and me. Finally, near the end of chapter one, he says, Let us make man in our own image. Wait a minute. If, in fact, God said, I'm going to make some little miniatures of myself. And if, in fact, two of these little miniatures are you and I, then why can't we speak worlds into existence? Oh, but we can. You and I speak worlds into existence every day. Each time we describe an experience or tell a story, we speak that world into existence in the minds of those around us. A gleam of light came straight through the opening into the bay and fell on the smooth rock face. There was a loud crack. A flake of rock split from the wall and fell. A hole appeared suddenly about three feet from the ground. Quickly, trembling lest the chance should fade, the dwarves rushed to the rock and pushed in vain. The key, the key, cried Bilbo. Where is Thorin? Thorin hurried up. The key, cried Bilbo. The key that went with the map. Try it now while there's still time. Then Thorin stepped up and drew the key from its chain from round his neck. He put it to the hole. It fitted and it turned. Snap! The gleam went out. The sun sank. The moon was gone and evening sprang into the sky. Now they all pushed together and slowly a part of the rock wall gave way. Long, straight cracks appeared and widened. A door five feet high and three feet wide was outlined and slowly, without a sound, swung inwards. It seemed as if darkness flowed out like a vapor from the hole in the mountainside, and deep darkness in which nothing could be seen lay before their eyes, a yawning mouth leading in and down. Bilbo and Thorin were spoken into existence by J.R.R. Tolkien in his book, The Hobbit. Are you beginning to understand the awesome force that hides behind your lips? You speak a new world into existence every time you utter a few simple words of encouragement. Words of romance create new worlds every day. And how often have words of persuasion created a brave new world? New worlds are only a few words away. Would you like to learn to harness this amazing energy? Hang on, it's going to be a wild ride. A powerful agent is the right word. Whenever we come upon one of those intensely right words in a book or a newspaper, the resulting effect is physical as well as spiritual and electrically prompt. Mark Twain, Chapter 2, Perceptual Realities Poet John Godfrey Sachs who lived from 1816 to 1887, tells of six men of Indostan, to learning much inclined, who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind, that each by observation might satisfy his mind. Those who have read Sax's poem will recall that the first blind man felt the broad side of the animal and proclaimed the elephant to be very like a wall. The second, feeling the elephant's tusk, was startled. Did you say wall? But an elephant is like a spear. Wrestling with the elephant's squirming trunk, the third said, Wall? Spear? The elephant is like a snake. The fourth man, feeling the elephant's knee, said, Idiots! The elephant is like a tree. The fifth, feeling the ear, said, Have you all gone crazy? An elephant is like a fan. The sixth man, feeling the tail, said, Any fool can see that an elephant is like a rope. In perceptual reality, 
each of the men was correct. I tell this story because most efforts at human persuasion are little more than one blind man urging another blind man to see the elephant as he does. Have you ever plotted?